Tavern Peeps and Adamages, it's Jane and Fable. I'm down in the studio and I've got to show you Wiggle Worm. Yeah, I've got to show you this new face facts ruler. And even though I checked the floor for things that were rattly, Fable has managed to found, find something. So if you hear other noise, um, I apologize. I absolutely adore designing with clear plexiglass because of its nature. It's strong, it's stable and versatile. Each piece in the Clear Thinking collection has been designed to be practical, super useful, attractive and easily stored. And as a brief overview, I'll just show you the pieces. So there's the Mini Mixer palette. This was the first piece I developed and it's just a nice little handy size to mix inks and acrylics on the fly. The next little set was my acrylic stamp block set. The grid lines help you position your stamps, but also help you find your clear stamp blocks and they're nice and thick, so they're nice and sturdy. The next pieces was the storage and symmetry set. This is the symmetry board. You can use it as a giant stamp block, but you can also use it to line up your art. And I'll show that in a different video. I've also got the favorite things board. I've also done these as available separately because people wanted, they had more stamps <laughs> than could be held on one board. So I've put my stamps on the back and front of this because it's clear you can see the, your favorite stamps that you want to use. It's not a permanent storage solution. It's to literally put the things that you are wanting to use at the moment and keep them right there in front of you. I use stamps for labeling things, for kickstarting art, uh, for all sorts of different uses. And I like to have my favorite ones there. I don't have to go into any other storage. All my favorite things right there. You can also stick, um, if you've got favorite like cutting dies or other favorite things you want to use, just attach them on there with some washi tape. You can also use a whiteboard marker and make notes for yourself. And I love, the Art Deco stand. It's got this beautiful holographic laser finish. It's actually called an AB finish, which stands for Aurora Borealis. So you can stand all of the pieces in this, but you can also use it as a little bit of stamp storage as well. And it's open sided so that you can fit whatever you want to pop in there. I've got my stencils, I've got a couple of my favorite things boards the mini mixer, the stamp blocks, and of course, I pop my new face facts ruler there as well. And I'll just point out that all of these things are available in little sets or as a whole bundle. So if just one part appeals to you, you can get that or you can get all of the pieces, but they're made to all work together. On to the details of the face facts ruler. These are the types of proportions that I demonstrate in my well, my own art for start, but also in my best-selling books and in my coloring books as well. And if you follow my work, then maybe you love that style too. And, and this template is designed to help you grow confidence in your drawing. If you're already drawing faces, then you'll really find this helpful because it will speed up that process significantly. I'm going to use one of my Rainbow Artist is Real pencils just a lead pencil give it a little bit of a sharpen always when you're using a template sharp pencil is just a lovely thing but you can use whatever tool you feel like and because it is clear I can move it around on my page and decide where I think my a, a little drawing of a figure is going to be most suitable just draw through the template just get that nice little oval there and you can see on the right hand side, I've got a face there with the proportions lined up. This face is actually also in one of my face stamp sets and it's meant as just an average guideline. Uh, I'm not saying that faces have to look like this in any way. This is just a guideline to help you get started. And there are some little um, guide marks to help you place the middle of the face. So I'm just popping those in, just following the template, making some light marks so I can see where the middle of that face is going to be, which can be quite helpful. I'm going to come across where the guideline for the middle of the lips is and across to where just I want the nose round about to finish. Every face is different, but if I know I aim for that spot, 
it will look like a well-proportioned face. And the eyes are on the middle of that circle. So again, they can be above it, they could be below it. They could be right on that middle line. All of them are going to work. This is just to help you get within the vicinity and to help build a little bit of confidence in your drawing of faces so that you feel freer to try a wider variety of feature placement. The first thing I'm going to do once I take my template away is I like to add ears. I think that just helps balance the face. It also makes sure that I don't forget them, which is easy to do, especially when you're beginning uh, your drawing journey. Ears are very important. I'm also adding just a little bit of shape on the outside of the uh, face, just to put that little eye socket in. If you feel on your own face, you can feel where that comes in next to your eyes and then goes out at your cheekbones. Well, I'm feeling my face, that's what I can feel. And we all, <laughs> we all bring our own experience to every drawing that we do. So how about if I just say, this is what I do. Very welcome to try it. Uh, also very welcome to try whatever you want to do. And then I'm adding a little bit of straightness. I'm not keeping that full oval. There's nothing wrong with drawing the face as an oval. I've got a round face myself. But I want to add in a little bit of structure there. I want to add in a little bit of jawbone. So I'm straightening that down. I've got the middle of my chin marked and I can just swing that line through to the chin so that I'm just creating a face with a little bit of shape there. And the way that we all draw, hold our pencil and move our pencil is going to be a little bit different. I like to start off quite lightly with feathery lines and then as I get more and more confident about where the drawing is going, I might start going over those lines, making them darker or drawing with a slightly darker line. But when I'm using pencil, I like to keep it light because the reason I'm using the pencil is I either want to be able to erase or I want to be able to smudge and we will smudge the pencil later. It's a lovely effect. So I'm just keeping my lines light. I can always go back over them, build up the darker lines. Uh, I'm not going to give you a few, full tutorial on eye shape and all of these things. I teach all of that in my online workshops and it just needs more uh, description and more time than what I've got right here. But also, the way we draw eyes, the way we see eyes, I find it's quite individual and I'm very happy for people to use my methods as they're learning. But I think over time, everyone develops their own way of drawing eyes, which I think is wonderful because there are so many beautiful eye shapes. And in the rest of this video, you're going to see me drawing two quite different eye shapes, but they're based on the same proportions from the face facts ruler and you could use I don't always draw eyes the same way but in this instance I fleshed out the eye shape the actual outer container and then I've added my details of the little tear ducts and the um, irises and I've decided to make the eyes look across to the side so that I can add in another subject or something else so sh my little person that I'm drawing at the moment is going to be looking across I've used that guideline of the nose to help me place where I'm going to be popping that nose and the lips and those little guidelines that carry you across from your face facts ruler will help you with that. Again, you can have the lips sitting right in the middle, underneath, over the top. It's going to change the way the face looks, the way the proportions are. Then you start to get into your own aesthetics and whether you like the way the faces that you're drawing look or if you want to mix things up and change things. And I've drawn that the top part of the circle that will get erased once I start forming hair. And on the face facts rule, I've got just some little swishy hairlines just marked on there just to remind you that the top of that oval isn't where the hair starts. Well, it can if you want to. You know, you could have a hairline that starts further back, nothing wrong with that. But just depending on where you want to draw it, I like to draw a fairly low hairline. It just gives me more room to do a creative hairstyle. So um, you can decide aesthetically where you want the hair to sit because 
everyone's hairline is different and the shapes of people's hairlines are different and we can alter the shape of our hairline with our hairstyle so I'm just adding in some soft curved lines just to give um, just a soft hairdo with a side part so like a fringe or just uh, long hair that's just tucked behind the ears and I think she needs a little friend, don't you? So let's <laughs> let's use the face facts ruler again. And I'm going to get that just that central starting oval to start the face off. Now, when I was designing this, uh, I spent a lot of time on working on the exact size and the exact proportions of these uh, oval shapes to give you uh, just I suppose I can say the best foot forward. I was trying to think of something to do with faces. <laughs> but give you that initial head start. There we go. That initial little head start. <laughs> just on your face making journey so that it just makes things easier so that you want to do it more. You find it more enjoyable. Challenging yourself and, and looking for your own style and all of that sort of stuff is very important, but it's a very gradual process. And if we don't start that journey, we won't even get to that part of the journey. So what I'm trying to do with this is make it as open and inclusive to start drawing faces as I can. I have that as my goal with a lot of my art supplies. And for those people that are already drawing faces, because I use my own, these, um, even though I can draw a face, I love drawing faces. I also love the little head start all of these different tools give me. Anyway, whoops, soapbox, just climbed up on there accidentally. But I was using my guides. I put my little eyes on there and I gave the eyes just an eye space in between them. So I eye space and eye just on that central line I know the nose goes there somewhere around that little guideline I usually pop just the bottom of the nose well, you can see what I do I've, I've got it right there on the face facts ruler and with the basic placement of the features just dotted in just lightly what worked in I can then work on changing or um, mixing up the feature placement and size and shape. I go through this in detail in my book Beautiful Faces and in quite a lot of detail. Um, for, but for this face I'm tilting the corner of the outer eye up a little to give a more feline look to the eyes and I'm swinging the irises and pupils to be looking over at my other subjects. So as soon as you've got two subjects on a page or in an artwork, there's a story there. They don't have to be two humans, just a, a, two subjects, whatever they are, because then you're wondering, well, what's the relationship between these two? Are they friends? Are they frenemies? Is one imagining, you know, is it a, a, like a, an imagination of the other? Um, you know, you're opening yourself up to story and creating greater meaning in the art well not greater meaning that's probably not such a great way of saying it but extra or more layered meaning uh, that's you can still be working intuitively and sometimes the meaning doesn't come to you I'm not thinking oh I'm going to make this into a story about xyz I'm letting these people fall out of my pencil and letting them tell me what their little story might be. I've given them eyebrows, which just sit above the eyes. That's all you need to know about eyebrows <laughs> at this juncture of time. Uh, and the neck, we just want it placed equally on either side of the chin. Whether you do it thin or wide, as long as it's sort of sitting there. The middle of it is in the middle of the chin for a straight facing face. Everything will look just fine. And I'm adding in some swingy hair. I've been watching The Queen's Gambit and the hair and the styling and the fashion in that show is just gorgeous. And uh, so I think that's where, well, that's who I was thinking of when I was drawing this swinging hair and thinking oh, maybe she's going to have that glorious red hair. I don't know. She doesn't. Uh, spoiler alert. But... 
these are the inspirations. We're inspired by so many things always. And I'm just giving her a little bit of a, don't know what the technical term is for an ear resizing, but she just had one. And building her hair up. So I've got contrasting hairdos. It's in pencil so I can make changes as I go. Giving my uh, girls here just a little bit of smudgy pencil because at this point I thought, oh, I want to smudge this pencil. And very often with a pencil drawing, we treat it as the initial sketch and then it gets completely covered up with other things. I must say, if I'm using pencil, lead pencil, I like to see it because the soft grey of it is really very nice. It's calming. And uh, there's ways we can leave it so that it's not being covered right up, that it's it becomes part of the journey of the artwork. So I've got two different hairstyles. We've got a giant bun and the swinging bob. We've got the two bees, the BBs there. The two girls looking at each other. I don't know who they are. We'll find out as we go. Like I said, I want to get a bit of smudging and I did place this stencil on purpose so that I had that uh, nice soft powdery pink, which is Ladybug Dotters, by the way, in the background. Um, I should have mentioned that. Uh, completely dry, of course. And I'm using some of my palette pastels to just smudge some colour onto her cheeks. It always looks like a lot at first, but don't worry about that. Uh, the other thing with pastels is they're so easy to erase uh, or to lighten off. Mm, love them. And I'm smudging with one of my batten blenders and using that to blend out the lead pencil and blend it with some of that soft pastel. I'm just going to pop the video up into fast speed because I really <laughs> this video is about showing you the face math ruler and we've done that now uh, we've kind of finished with her at this point because we've done our initial drawing and we're off to the races we're doing all well I, I think drawing is fun but adding all the color is well super fun and I'm using my layer cake uh, paint and what else did I just use there? I found the fountain pen I used to add that darker points on her eyelashes. And I felt that I needed to knock back. I've got all those spots and dots from the ladybug dotters underneath the other girl. And I need to control that a little. Otherwise, she kind of looks like she has the measles. And then the whole page just goes on from there. I mean, turquoise hair, why wouldn't you? And then that set the tone for the rest of the piece. But what I wanted to say is if you wanted to see this whole process in real time I talk through all of my decisions why I'm picking certain colors um, and then how that leads to picking the next color more tips on drawing hair more tips on drawing skin tones and different faces and everything else that you're going to see in this video it's all in my Facebook group which is free to join some people who don't like Facebook have joined Facebook just to be part of that group it's a private group and um, that's where I do my live videos because, well, I just do. I love it in there. And I've, I just feel like I can take my time. Whereas on YouTube, I feel like <laughs> if the video is too long, that's just no good. And especially going at this fast speed, you can really see where the artwork goes in and out of ugly stages and the different decisions I'm making as we go. But because I've got that nice foundation, it's all fun as far as I'm concerned. And I can think about other things like well, what colors are the different things gonna be. And I've gotta say, when I added that pink, which is called Cupcake from my layer cake paints, oh, my world changed. I just, there's something about turquoise and pink and oh, it just makes me so happy. Ah, <sighs> and there we have. Just, I already had a random background that I'd made with the ladybug dotters. I used my face fax ruler to create just nice little proportion faces I use the largest circle you can use it to create much smaller faces as well which can be more difficult to draw uh, the symmetry grid is what I use to draw the bigger faces this is a fabulous tool for smaller face drawing and I must say as a designer having a gut feeling about wanting to create a tool a template that makes it easier to draw faces and that 
adding that heart feeling that why I want people to be able to do that, then being able to intellectualize it and turn it into an actual thing in the world brings me a lot of joy because I know that it will bring other people a lot of joy. You can find the face facts ruler at janedovenport.com. It's a JDHQ exclusive. That's the only place you can find it. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find the links in the comment block below. Thanks for watching and I hope you do something creative today. Bye.